As a young boy, I've always looked up to the sky. Well, my name is Chip Diggins. I've uh, been flying since, uh, I've had a pilot's license since the early 80s. I went to Wentworth Institute of Technology um, from 79 to 81, became a licensed aircraft mechanic. Aircraft mechanics are licensed through the Federal Aviation Administration. And shortly when I got into the field of fixing airplanes, I decided, you know, getting a private pilot's license was the next uh, logical step. So here we are today. Um, probably since I was the age of four, I had an interest in flying. My father put me on a helicopter ride at the South Weymouth Fairgrounds, which no longer exists. And uh, from then on, I was hooked at age four. Um, you know, even as a young boy, I've always looked up to the sky. Um, couldn't wait to get a model when I was a kid. We'd build the models, and of course, back then, there were balsa wood. Um, and I, it's, it's hard to say what sparked it, but um, I just th thought things that fly are pretty amazing. My first solo was at South Weymouth Naval Air Station before they, uh, long before they shut down. Um, I flew it, we had an aero club over there and I sold a Cherokee 140. And the funny thing was, um, they had a resting gear for training the uh, carrier pilots and we had so much runway over there at South Weymouth. I think we had uh, eight or 9,000 feet of runway. And the small airplanes only required a few hundred feet of runway. So we, and the numbers were so big on the runways, we used to kind of show off and land on the numbers and be at a complete stop before the number ran out. Um, so yeah, that was, that was my first solo um, at South Weymouth Naval Air Station. Um, it's kept me poor. <laughs> um, it's hard to say. It's been my life since, uh, since high school. Um, it's given me a broad horizon of the world. I've gone a lot of places. I never flew commercially, I always kept my private pilot's license, but I've flown in all 50 states, seven Canadian provinces, or six Canadian provinces, excuse me. Um, and when I say flown in all 50 states, obviously didn't fly my airplane to Hawaii because it's too far, but have a friend out there with an airplane, so I've been able to fly around the Hawaiian Islands. Spent a couple of weeks on a trip to Alaska with my other experimental aircraft. Um, got as far as seeing Siberia in the distance. Um, so it's kind of been my bucket list to see every little uh, small town and um, as well as see the big tourist sites. Well, an overnight flight requires quite a bit more preparation, but a day flight, which we take off in just a matter of, um, back in the day, we used to have to call flight service and check NOTAMs. Uh, NOTAM is a notice to airmen. 
Um, today we basically flip on our iPhones or our iPads and we get all the information online. Uh, we get it from Wi-Fi and we check the weather, we check all the conditions and that takes a few minutes and then we go flying after we do a pre-flight inspection. Um, <clears throat> if we're going to go for a longer flight, overnight usually, we have to plan for food, uh, hotels, possibly rental cars. Uh, depends on where we're going, how far we're going. Prepare for every flight um, with what we call a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft. Um, what we basically walk around the whole airplane, it's difficult to do on camera right here because our space is limited, but we start with the engine, check the propeller for any uh, abnormalities, uh, dents, chips, cracks, or any types of damage. Uh, check the oil obviously, inspect inside the cowling for uh, any debris, such as a bird's nest. Birds love to make nests inside of engines because they're nice and warm. And we walk around, we check all the flight controls. We test the fuel each time, actually take a sample of it, see if there's water in it. We climb up on the wing and we uh, visually inspect in the gas tanks, the fuel tanks, to make sure that we have enough fuel. And we check to make sure all of our systems are working before we take off. We never take off with a strike against us. So if something doesn't work right, or you've got uh, any issue with the airplane at all, you stop and fix it or have it fixed uh, before you proceed with your flight. Well, a regular aircraft and experimental aircraft are the same thing. Um, the experimental is a category which it becomes certified under. Every person that builds an experimental aircraft builds one of a kind. There are no two kit foxes exactly like the one you see in the background here. For example, people think of a certified aircraft um, as only one that you can buy from a manufacturer. And they are certified but under a different category. Just think about experimental as one of a kind and the builder is the manufacturer, whereas it's, for example a Cessna 172 would be built by a manufacturer and they're all built exactly the same. The EAA is Experimental Aircraft Association. Um, they just celebrated the 70th anniversary. So guys have been actually building their own airplanes and flying them for over 70 years now. Just like the Wright brothers did before most of us even knew what flying was or were even born. Um, and that ties in the difference between experimental and a regular airplane. In the case of an experimental, back in the day, 70 years ago, these guys wanted to fly their airplanes, and the FAA stepped in and said, hmm, somebody's gonna look at this and keep it safe, and we need to put you in a category. So the only logical category back then was uh, experimental category, which is a category that larger manufacturers used when they built uh, an experimental airplane. The manufacturers would build one airplane, test it, and if it met the criteria that the FAA was looking at for safety and all the other guidelines, they would go into a normal category or utility category or some other category than experimental. Mm, I wouldn't say so, um, if you know what you're doing. Most of these aircraft are built from kits. Back in the early days before they had manufactured kits, they would build them from plans. Um, and yes, there was inherent risk to, to, all, to all of that, um, but there's risk in everything. And I think humans like to venture out and try new things. The beauty of an experimental airplane is you can modify it to make it go faster, to make it go slower, to make it do different things. Um, it's perfectly safe and legal. This particular aircraft um, was from a kit. Um, <clears throat> The, the kit company is still in business. It's called uh, Kit Fox Aircraft. Um, you know, there's probably a couple thousand of these kits produced. But like I said, each finished product is a one of a kind. Probably wondering what it's made out of. You look at it and you go, boy, um, what's it constructed from? Well, the fuselage is made of chromolebdenum steel, the whole fuselage. 
and the uh, wing lift struts, as well as some other critical pieces are made of chrome molybdenum steel. So very, very strong. That technology goes back, oh, World War I era. But of course, uh, with chrome molybdenum steel, uh, 4130 um, is what they call it, is very, very strong. It's all the modern um, elements to make it a strong metal. And the wings and fuselage are covered with aircraft grade fabric. We actually gets glued on uh, and then stitched on. There's actually a procedure to stitch it onto the wings and then it gets a painting process that makes it look like you see here. The engine cowling that I just took off earlier um, is made of fiberglass and the windshield is formed from a flat sheet by the builder. It's just made of Lexan. The Lexan is a very soft plastic. It allows you to form it around to make a shape. And that's how we get the shape of the windshield. Uh, same on the side windows. Very thin um, Lexan material. Keeps the wind from blowing in. Uh, keeps little things from falling out. Um, however, you can fly with the door wide open which when it's a nice warm day out. Quite often if we're taking pictures or whatever, um, we fly with the doors open. We have a four point harness to keep us strapped in. So there's really no chance of falling out. Plus you're down in a bucket seat. You'd have to really work at getting out of it. Um, a lot of times you give a rides and people might not be happy with the door open when they're flying. So we close them up and we have uh, vents for the hot days and actually has heat for the cold days. Um, I started building this in 2000, late 2000, finished it in early to mid 2001, got the FAA to come down to my house where I built it in one car garage. One of the nice features about this particular aircraft and the kit foxes um, is that the wings easily fold for storage. Uh, I have a big hangar space here, so I don't need to fold them. But I simply remove this center piece. There's just a couple of screws, and this take take this away. Uh, and there's two heavy steel pins in the front of the wing, which allow the wing to come back like this, and it rests over the tail. Um, so you can fold it up and put it in a one-car garage. It's kind of an appealing factor for somebody who doesn't have access to a hangar. You can actually. Uh, bring it to the airport with your trailer and fold the wings out and off you go. And there's several guys who actually do that on a regular basis. Uh, I prefer the hangar because I'm lazy. I'd rather just get in and fly it. And they certified it. Uh, two of the inspectors came out and certified it. And then it... Oh, <coughs> excuse me. The very next... Oh, the very next day... Uh, three... Oh, we lost our friend in the World Trade Center, so it's emotional. Every time I think about it, it's difficult. So it leads me a little teary eyed today. The very next day, uh, two airliners crashed into the World Trade Center. So they shut down all the airspace, so I couldn't test fly my airplane. Um, and that's how I can remember the day that I had it certified. It was right, right before 9-11. Um, I've always been a guy that works with my hands. I love working with my hands. I love to create things. Um, and when you build an experimental airplane, you can put all different levels of craftsmanship into it. I mean, some guys build them and you probably don't want to fly in them. Some guys build them and they're more beautiful than a Swiss watch. 
This particular one has won awards for uh, craftsmanship. Um, and it's been flying now for 20, 22 years. It's never had anything wrong with it. It's just been a joy to fly. I've given almost 200 kids their first flight, most of them in this airplane. So it's been a real pleasure. Favorite memory of flying? Boy, every flight is different. Sometimes you can fly the same route to the same airport. It's a completely different flight. But a favorite memory? Hmm, there's probably been some interesting ones where I've landed in the, in the Grand Canyon, not with this airplane, but my other RV6. And there's a, there's a Indian reservation in the Grand Canyon called Marble Canyon. And they actually have a runway down in, inside the canyon. And I was invited to go in and by the Indian reservation and check it out, so I did. Almost wish I hadn't, the runway was so rough I thought I was gonna lose a tire. But uh, it worked out pretty well. Worlds of opportunity. <clears throat> well, I would say it's the people that you meet. I've met some pretty incredible people and some notable names. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford's a pilot, as you all know, and uh, he was the Young Eagles coordinator not, uh, or chairman, I guess, for the EAA for a number of years. So I've actually had dinner with um, Harrison Ford, and I've met guys like Chuck Yeager in person. Uh, and the list goes on and on and on with the Im impressive people of notoriety that you meet. Uh, of course, all the different airplanes. Uh, the amount of different airplanes you get. You get opportunity as a pilot because people want to show off their aircraft. And they're proud of what they built. And you get invited to, into a lot of uh, hangars and so on and so forth, which you wouldn't get invited into if you weren't uh, probably a pilot because uh, pilots can appreciate what um, the other builders and pilots have done. My favorite plane to fly, that's a tough one. I'm a little partial because I love this old girl. Um, I also have an RV6, which is, uh, well, it has a cruise speed of just under 200 miles an hour, where this Kit Fox has a cruise speed of somewhere in the mid-90s, 90, 90, 95 miles per hour. And they're both a uh, joy to fly. I like the sportiness of an experimental aircraft. Uh, the crisp, snappy controls as opposed to in a heavier airplane, the controls are slower, more sluggish. Um, most of these experimentals uh, drive more like a sports car than they do like the family wagon. Well, it started out with an <clears throat> Austrian-made Rotax two-cycle engine, and it flew it that way for a number of years, but I felt it was underpowered. So I retrofitted it five or six years ago, and I put a Australian-made Jabiru engine on it, which looks just like a quote-unquote certified four-cylinder, four-cycle engine. There's two spark plugs per cylinder. There's four cylinders, two on the left, two on the right. It's a horizontally opposed engine. It's quieter, smoother, and it's got more horsepower, so it gives me um, a better top speed. And it's also four cycle versus two cycle, so it doesn't sound like a chainsaw. Um, but it's an 85 horsepower jabber. Advice for inspiring pilots. Well, stay with it. That's all I can say. Some people are meant to be pilots and some people aren't. It's not for everybody, but once you learn and once you experience the joy of flight and landing the airplane, it's pretty hard not to get hooked. As far as the advice goes, train, constantly train. You, um, we get stale in our skills. Constantly go up and fly, practice. Practice by yourself or practice with a flight instructor. And always try to strive for a higher rating. The next rating would be, for me, would be a commercial rating or an instrument rating. You can get either one next after a private pilot. Um, and then you'd step up into 
airline transport pilot. There's just, everybody's got advice for pilots, let me tell you, but I guess that would be it in a nutshell.